We had a really cool opportunity to organize this uh, field component of this MICRA event. Um, and so what MICRA is, is it's an acronym. It stands for Mississippi Interstate Cooperative Resource Association. And it's a group of 28 states and a, a few federal agencies that all work together. Um, their, their mission, really their charge, is to work cooperatively to you know, improve the management and conservation of fisheries in the Mississippi River Basin. You know, those fish in the Mississippi River, they don't know where state borders are, so it's important that we all work together to, to manage those populations. We brought together several different state agencies, uh, Mississippi Department of Wildlife, Fish and Parks, uh, Alabama Department of Conservation and Natural Resources. Uh, we also had uh, several federal agencies there. The, USGS, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service, and TVA. Thanks everybody for coming and, and making this happen and I guess working with my scheduling and all that and just appreciate y'all being here and hopefully this will be a pretty cool little outing. Not every day, especially right now that we can get a group like this together and get out with eight boats and, and chase some carp down. So basically what we're going to do is kind of line up at the mouth of these embayments and fire up the electro fishers and just start easing back towards the back of them and from when we've done this before you know we tend to, to push the fish kind of back until they start getting uncomfortable large get shallow on them and um, last time I think you know we start hitting fish in nine and ten feet of water so kind of watch your depth finder you might know when to start expect to see the fish. especially in these places where there aren't as many of these fish around, like, like Pickwick Lake. Um, it takes more boats, uh, all working kind of together in unison, kind of in a tandem fashion. This time around, you know, we only saw a couple of fish uh, and they were, they were able to kind of evade us uh, pretty well. This is a technique that we typically use more so when the water's a little cooler. The fish are more congregated and, and can't escape quite as easily. But, uh, you know, we had an opportunity here and, and when we have opportunity like this to get all these folks that were involved out, we just kind of take advantage of it when we can. So. Alabama's boat. Yeah, they're going to miss on that one. Go ahead. Well, you had, he's retired. You can't, that's what happened. Good. You guys see anything? I ain't playing nothing on the side. Oh, man. Baitfish. Love millions. I believe if we go below the dam, we'll get them. Let's go. And they're not spilling according to their schedule, yeah. so it should be pretty cool, cool go. calm water down there. And then in the afternoon, we had a chance to go down below Pickwick Dam, uh, which is technically a part of Kentucky Lake. And you know, we've got higher numbers of silver carp down there. Uh, and. We used some similar methods, not quite as many boats down there. You know, we're not, uh, it wasn't pushing a cove the same way that we had been. Um, but we were, we were kind of working together to electrofish around the, the face of the spill gates there and the lock and um, we're able to, to collect some fish down below so that we were still able to show people uh, what a silver carp is and, you know, we kind of highlighted how these fish are using the, the locks at these dams to move from one reservoir to the next.
commercial fishing has been a, a really important component of what we're doing in Tennessee to try and prevent these fish from spreading. Um, our harvest program right now is, is going really well. Um, I think on average they're harvesting you know, almost 700,000 pounds of fish every month. So there's a variety of products that, that silver carp can be used for when it's brought to a commercial market. Um, you know, some of the higher value products, uh, you can see silver carp as, as food for human consumption. They'll uh, use it in strips or fish cakes or things. And it's really good to eat. It's, uh, it's a pretty mild, white, flaky fish. Other industries that are using it, the bait industry, uh, right now over on the East Coast, there's a lot of the silver carp going over there for uh, lobster fishing, bait, and then uh, I think also some down, down in southern states, down in Florida, uh, maybe for crabs and things. Um, and then there's, uh, you know, kind of your byproduct, lower level, um, fish meal type products, fertilizer, um, some pet food products, things like that. You know, we had representatives from the Mississippi Wildlife Federation, the Tennessee Wildlife Federation, um, multiple states, uh, micro representatives. All this was pulled together by uh, our TWA staff. Um, they did a fantastic job uh, getting, getting boats lined up. Uh, other states contributed boats and equipment to uh, a lot, of, quite a bit of time and effort into, into you know, putting on a, a good, good field event for the folks that were there to emphasize, you know, what's going on with silver carp in Tennessee and really Tennessee and Cumberland River Basin and surrounding states.